brings us to the full basic um, player, right? So those were all the little examples I wanted to walk you through. But I wanted to try to bring it all together in a single experience that you could copy from if you needed to, uh, if you're coding inside of Flash. And before I get into the, I'm not actually going to walk you through all the code of that full basic player because there's just a lot of GUI interaction that that isn't OSMF specific, might be relevant for you, again, in the way you build players, so you can copy it out. But there are a few concepts I wanted to cover that are easy but important for building your own players to work off of OSMF. So the first are some of the properties that exist on the media player. One is duration, that you just say media player dot duration and you have your duration. How long is this piece of media in seconds? Time, where am I in this piece of media in seconds? Autoplay, which I already showed you, but does this autoplay? And auto rewind, which you can also set uh, defaults to false, but you can set to true. Okay, so four important properties on the media player. Now, some events. Time event dot current time change. That tells you when the media is played. Okay, it's like a, it's equivalent of a progress event on the net stream. So you would listen for the current time change event, and as you'll see. In the, the sample code I, I gave you, I, I write a lot of traces just so you can see when these events are firing. The time event in OSMF has a time property. So you'll get a current time change. It'll say, what time are we at now in the video? And then whenever the time changes, we'll get that event and we'll have a time property that we can read. Next is the media player capability change event dot can load change. That is dispatched when a media player uh, is loadable. Can, it, can something load into this media player? Again, uh, oh, uh, so again, in the sample code I've given you, I trace out that event. Also, not just to show you when it happens, but that the property on that event is called enabled. And if it's true, you now can load. And if it's false, you now cannot load. Okay, again, a very important event. Media player capability change event can play. The media loaded into the media player is playable or not playable, right? Again, it has an enabled property. Can seek, as it sounds, is this media seekable or not? Again, these are, like I said, they're simple, but having to find which are the core ones that you need to work with to build a player, that is the thing that's time consuming. That's why I'm pulling them out here and highlighting them for you. So you'll see again that um, as with all media player capability change events, there's an enabled property that says whether this is become seekable or stopped being seekable. There's a media error event, which is akin to an I.O. error event in Flash. Um, and again, that's the sort of thing that you want to account for when you're coding in ActionScript 3. And that has an error property on it. And I believe in the final one here, we have the media player state change event, which is def dispatched when the media player's state changes, surprisingly. It has a state property, which from my testing, seemed, and these don't correspond, unfortunately, to any constants yet in the language. Um, so it was really hard. Uh, I think this is the five states that are dispatched. Um, but you have playing when it's playing, loading when it's loading, buffering when it's buffering, uninitialized, right, and ready, which I thought was somewhat counterintuitively fired at the end of a video as well, right, because it's ready for a playback again. So again, I trace all these out in the sample player that I give you, so you can just do a quick test and see when they're firing in which order. But those are the five states that I've been able to trace out. So to show you that that player actually works, it's in the full basic player folder of the course files, talk files. So it just has uh, two buttons, so you can pick which video you want to play, a play pause button, a volume slider, and a progress bar. But if I were to say food and survival, on an untried mission to an unknown oh I should say the one thing the one thing I didn't explain in this uh, in the talk that you'll need for this the slider controls the volume property of the media player so it's just volume you just say media player dot volume there's no sound transform object there's no anything like that you just say media player dot volume equals 0.5 or 1 for full volume okay so uh, and then as you right swap out it resets the interface so again, a simple basic player, but shows you how to listen to those events, how to react with those events, and again, how to start interacting with some GUI controls in your open source media framework development. 
Okay, so before concluding, highlight some next steps. You want to go to adobe.com slash go dot uh, slash OSMF. There is an increasing amount of documentation up there. There is a user group, a virtual user group, OSMF user group run by Greg Hamer out of uh, Nevada. Nevada. We, <laughs> they don't like Nevada. It's Nevada. Um, so you can find out that information there as well. Uh, the documentation. So I, you guys saw, hopefully, that I was doing this sort of stuff a little bit. That's because I have the OSMF docs. Where's my cursor? Running locally on my computer. You can get those along with the uh, source download of OSMF and the SWIC. The sample files that come down with the downloads, I think, are are still a little um, a little confusing. So uh, you might want to do some Googling. I have some posts up. I know Jody O'Rourke has some really good posts up on using OSMF. Um, but again, the documentation itself is getting better at a really fast rate. I mean, it has a long way to go, of course, but um, considering how much the language is changing, how quickly it's in development, I think they've done a really good job with that. So that's obviously where you want to start by reading the documentation, checking as many sample files as you can, and of course, you'll want to start working with it, which I can say, honestly, in good conscience, I can recommend for you at this point, right? Before before the Sprint 10 delivery, it, it was sort of a, a, a health warning kind of hazard, right? Because, I mean, it was so frustrating to have, you know, I'd build these tutorials, these courses, record them, put them online, and then as, you know, as I'm editing it down, they release a new version of the framework and all the code doesn't work. But again, now they've locked down big parts of the API. They've posted on the site which parts are locked down. So I'd encourage all of you to start working with it. I really feel that OSMF, is the sort of thing they should have done before Flex. And honestly, in my opinion, media handling is so fundamental to what we do that I guess we didn't even think about it needing to be abstracted into a framework. But when you think about it, and maybe I should have made a bigger point of this up front, but why do I need to play a video with a completely different set of code and classes and commands and concepts than loading an image or playing a sound file? Right? And that's a big part of what OSMF helps to address. Yes, it makes complex functionality much easier, as I think we saw with the dynamic streaming and the subclipping, but it also abstracts working with media to a really nice degree. We want to load a piece of media, we tell a media element to load. We want to play a piece of media, we tell a media player to play. We don't have to guess that this is a net stream, this is a sound object, but we have to tell the sound channel to stop, not the sound object. The sound object's just to load and play, right? I mean, it made no real sense, which is actually quite contrary to the, the overall vibe of AS3, which is we make sense, right? So now I think OSMF fills a really important gap in the ActionScript development community, and I'd really like to see Flash developers uh, start picking it up and feeling comfortable with it, because it really is accessible, I think, to everybody who is comfortable coding on a timeline. So with that, I, I'd like to thank you. My blog, again, is rblank.com. That's where I'll be posting the files. Training company is Rich Media Institute, and my production company is Almer Blank. Thank you very much.